Welcome back to the channel, y'all. So today we're gonna be doing a highly requested video, doing an AP class tier list of all 38 AP classes. Now, if you're an OG on this channel, you'll know that I did do a similar list to this, but strictly for the underclassmen classes, which is about like half of these. Um, so we're expanding that list today to include all of them. Now, a few notes and disclaimers so that we're on the same page. I know that things can differ from school to school, from teacher to teacher, so just take this with a grain of salt. Now, what I will be doing is kind of taking my teacher out of the equation when I make this, these rankings. Um, and if I haven't taken a class in order to maintain sort of the objectivity of this and not being influenced by subjectivity, uh, I will be using sort of what my friends have said, what the YouTube community said, and what I've read online in order to make this an effective tier list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is based on purely difficulty measures, and S is going to be the hard one, and F is going to be the easiest ones. So starting off with AP 2D Art and Design, I personally have not taken this class, but I'm going to go ahead and put this in the E category from what I've heard from my friends and online. This is, I will say, a very volatile class in terms of difficulty because a lot of teachers, from what I heard, is, is make this class a completion. So if you turn this assignment in on time, you'll get 100. Now, some teachers, um, which I would say is less of the time rather than more of the time will actually grade you very difficult on the assignments. So just keep that in mind. Now, AP Calculus AB, um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the, it's between the A and B category, but I'm going to go ahead and put in the A category. Uh, it's definitely a little bit easier than Calc BC, but what makes Calculus so difficult is just you have to be pretty much perfect in, in all of your previous, you know, four years of math. Um, and this is sort of the first AP math you'll, class you'll probably take. So it's gonna make this class hard. I'm sure you guys have probably heard this as being a hard class. And AP Calculus BC uh, kind of takes the throne on that of being a little even more harder than AP Calculus BC. Um, AP Calculus BC just has more content than AP Calculus BC, or than AP Calculus AB. So it covers some uh, polars and some sequences that AP Calculus AB doesn't do. And those are actually, in my opinion, the hardest parts of the, that class, which makes this class so difficult. Now, AP Computer Science A, definitely a lot easier than AP Calculus AB, but not a breather class by any means. I'd put that in the C category. Um, this is a pretty sort of straightforward class in terms of what you need to do. There's really no subjectivity to the class you code. You figure out the outputs in terms of your multiple choice tests. Um, and, and really, as long as you're doing your coding and your labs that your teachers assigned you, you'll be in good shape in this class. AP Computer Science Principles, um, typically taken as a precursor to AP Computer Science A or not as a prerequisite at all, um, is going to be in the between E and F, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in the F category. This is a probably one of the easiest AP classes you'll take. Um, it actually doesn't really have much to do with coding. Uh, a lot of the coding you do in the class is block coding, which makes it really easy. It's more so about things like big data and more like conceptual learning about computer science. But in general, this is easy and this is actually supposed to be sort of an intro to AP class and in terms of um, how College Board likes to treat this class. This is supposed to be like an intro level AP class, if that makes sense. Moving on, AP Statistics, compared to its um, other math brother, aka, AKA AP Calculus BC, um, is definitely easy, uh, easier, uh, but it's still going to be in the C category. Um, uh, AP Statistics is pretty straightforward during the first semester. Um, a lot of it is honestly just middle school and elementary school math, just you know calculating medians and modes. And But the thing is, once you get to that second semester, you're sort of taking all that information and then you're applying it in new ways that you haven't seen before. So that second semester is definitely, I would say, you know, decently difficult. Now, AP Biology, I'm going to go ahead and put in the between C and B categories, but I'm going to put it in the C category, but I will say it's harder than AP CSA and AP Stats slightly. Um, AP Biology is difficult just because of how much content there is. Uh, there's just so much you need to cover from genetics to ecosystems, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would highly recommend taking an advanced or honors biology class before taking this class so you can feel more prepared. APES or AP Environmental Science is going to be in the E category. It's a little bit harder than CSP, Computer Science Principles in my opinion, but it's definitely one of the easiest AP classes you can take, um, especially compared to the other you know, natural sciences. AP Physics 1 Algebra Based, I'm going to go ahead and put in the A category. Uh, it is extremely, extremely difficult. I think the main issue with AP Physics C, AP Physics 1, excuse me, unlike AP Biology and AP Chemistry and all these other AP Science classes is that you've never taken typically uh, a physics class before this. So this is your first one. And so you're really dumped into a world that you don't know much about. AP Physics 2, con uh, contrary to popular belief, I'm going to put this in the B category. Uh, you would expect this to be a little bit 
harder than the AP Physics one because, you know, it's the next course in the sequence, but it's actually typically easier. There tends to be a little bit less content in AP Physics 2, so it kind of gives you more time to really grasp the material, which is still difficult. Now, AP Physics C mechanics, uh, definitely in the uh, S tier category in terms of its difficulty. Guys, it's just a hard class. Um, you have to have mastered your kind of your AP Physics 1 material, which is sort of the Algebra 1 version of this class. And um, even once you've done that, the calculus is really trippy. I mean, it, and it's also really hard to find a great time to take this class. For example, if you want to know the calculus before taking this class, you kind of need to take BC your junior year and then take Physics C your senior year, which is a little bit difficult, right? If you want to take BC as a junior, especially in a lot of schools that may not allow that. And so I had a lot of friends, especially that took AP Physics C in the same time they took AP Calculus BC, and they actually ended up learning the calculus through AP Physics C faster than they learned the AP Calculus in AP Calculus BC. So it's a lot of work. Uh, AP Art History, I'm going to go ahead and put in the C category. It's some, um, you know, medium difficulty. It's definitely sort of middle of the road. Uh, there's a lot of memorization, but because the content doesn't really build on each other, um, it's kind of just rote memorization. So it's not too, too bad. AP Physics C E and M definitely harder than mechanics in my opinion. Um, a lot of people haven't taken AP Physics two before taking AP Physics C because uh, it's not a requirement in a lot of schools. So that typically makes it a little bit harder to grasp the material. AP Chinese Lang Ch excuse me Chinese language is the first language class that we're going to look at, um, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in the C category. Now. This is kind of in the middle of the road because Chinese itself is a very difficult language uh, compared to Spanish and French, especially if you're coming from an English-speaking background um, because they're sort of European languages and they're simil similar to each other. So the thing with Chinese is you're going to be good if you're either a native speaker or you know, you've know you actually taken three to four years before taking this class. If you do that, you should be okay and in shape. And you should really know by the time you take the class if you're actually going to be good at it or not. So I would just suggest to sort of make the right decision there. AP French, Language and Culture, I'll go ahead and put it in the D category. Um, again, if you've taken English, it tends to be a little bit, or if you know English, if that's your first language, that's French tends to be a little bit easier than Chinese. Um, and this, I'll do the same thing with German, though I will say the language itself is typically a little bit harder than D if you're um, an English speaker. AP Italian, also in the D category. Japanese, C category. Pretty much, if you guys aren't aware, all the language and culture classes are structured the same, same unit, same content. You're just doing that content or the application of that content, obviously, in a different language. So that's why I'm just kind of going to breeze through this. Uh, AP Latin is a C category. I know um, that is kind of the root language for a lot of what we know in English and some European languages, but it is typically a little bit harder. Uh, AP Spanish language, I would say, is probably Typically, it tends to be the easier one. There tends to be a lot more people that take that class too. So if you need help and you know want to have ask questions and stuff, I would say I would really suggest this class. Um, so that's going to be the D category. Now, AP Music Theory, I'm going to go ahead and put between the B and C category, but I'll say B. Now, for this class, you really want to be taking this class if you've already if you're in like orchestra, band, or any of those fine arts, or you you're play piano outside of school. Um, even once you've done that, it's really, really hard to grasp the material. There's not a lot of resources online. It's kind of the big thing. Um, you know, in calculus, you can go on Khan Academy and study, but there isn't really that sort of thing to study with on AP Music Theory, um, which makes this class pretty difficult, and the content is pretty hard. AP Ling is definitely, I will say, a hit or miss for a lot of people. Some people are really good at writing, some people are not. This is a very, very writing-based class, uh, but I'm going to put that in the C category. Um, it's a it's actually the number one most common AP class, and it's just a pretty standard class. I mean, if you've taken English 1 and English 2 uh, your freshman and sophomore years, you know, it's just sort of the next level of that. You you kind of you should know what to expect. Just expect a harder difficulty. So if you're not good in Honors English 1 or Honors English 2, don't take AP Lang. So AP English Literature, uh, I've heard, and in my opinion, tends to be easier than AP Lang for the most part, but again, this could vary by person. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the D category. There's a lot of required readings and a lot more analysis than you do in AP Lang. Um, but typically the reading, I'd say, tends to be easier than the laying. I think a lot of people get freaked out when they realize that they can't just take a multiple choice test and get by. Uh, AP Comparative Government, I'm going to go ahead and put in the E category. Uh, it's definitely a little bit harder than uh, AP 2D and AP Apes. So there is a lot of content to learn. However, the content itself isn't that difficult. One great thing is that you've kind of been learning government throughout your life. I mean, you know the executive branch, you know the other two branches. Like You kind of know a little bit about the stuff, especially if you've been uh, brought up in the United States or uh, the, the other countries that this class examines. So that's really, really good. Uh, AP European History, 
Um, the first major history class we're going to look at, I will go ahead and put... This could go either way, I would say, between the B and C category, but I'm going to go ahead and put this in the C category. Uh, the reason I'm going to put this in the C category, a uh, couple things. One, you will actually know a little bit more information before you get into this class than you think. You would think that you wouldn't know a lot about this, but if you've learned like world history before um, and things like that, you actually know a lot about this, especially during the WW1, WW2, uh, as well as the Cold War era, you're going to know a lot. So you do come in with some information, and since this isn't a STEM class, each unit doesn't build on each other, which is nice. Now, there is a lot of reading, which is why this class is uh, you know, in, in the C category, not lower in terms of difficulty. Um, so you really need to stay on top of your, your reading game in this class. AP Macroeconomics... I'm going to go ahead and put in the E category. This can definitely vary by person if you're not good at um, sort of, you know, finance and economics analysis. Um, and I'm also going to put AP microeconomics in the E category as well. AP psychology is going to go in the F category. This is pretty much another, again, one of those sort of intro AP classes, uh, meaning like you take this class to sort of get a feel for what AP classes are. Um, a lot of times this is taken as a one semester class because it just has not that much content. And the class itself tends to be very interesting, you know, regardless of what you want to go into. Even if you want to go into, um, you know, very niche field, let's say you want to major in art history that has nothing to do with AP psychology, but a lot of people still tend to find the class very interesting because it applies to your life day to day. Um, and so it's very, very interesting. And so because of that, you're going to pay a lot more attention. Um, and it's a very rote memorization based class. There's not much application, which makes this class pretty easy. AP seminar, this is definitely going to be a hit or miss by teachers. Some teachers, what they do is they don't even grade you and they just sort of give you completion grades. Um, and other teachers will grade you kind of harder, like an AP English language class. But I'm going to go ahead and put that in the D category. Hopefully you get a you know, nice and easy teacher, um, but I will say this class is pretty useful. Um, you know, There's a lot of great stuff you can learn as far as researching and things like that that'll you know apply later on in your life. AP drawing, similar to AP2D, I'm gonna put in the E category, but again, take this with a grain of salt because this can vary teacher to teacher depending on if they do completion grades or if they grade more difficultly. Uh, and similar to that logic, I'm gonna put the AP3D in the E category as well. AP human geography was the very first AP class I took and what a lot of freshmen take as their first AP class. A lot of fun memories in this class. Um, a lot of troublesome periods as well, with it being its first AP class. Uh, with with it being your first AP class, typically. Um, but I'm gonna put this in the E category. You know, <coughs> I would say if this is your first AP class, definitely treat it as if it's gonna be harder. Um, but you know, taking that factor aside, it's going to be in the E category. It's a lot of memorization and it's a lot of content that you already know. Human geography is very, uh, general knowledge. -y. Like you learn a lot about population distributions and, you know, you kind of, you, most of you probably know what the population of the United States is, is the third, third most populous country in the world. Like you already know some of the facts. And so that makes this class somewhat easy. Now, AP US government, I'm going to go ahead and put in the E category as well. Again, you know a lot of knowledge before you come in here, and the content itself isn't too, too difficult. AP US History, I'm going to go ahead and put in the B category. I would say out of all the history classes, this tends to be the most tough. It also tends to be in your junior year, so, you know, it's not that great of a time period. You maybe don't have much, much time to do it. Um, but it, what I'll say about this class is it's just a lot of content. Even though you know AP US History, probably if you grew up in the United States, it's so much more in-depth than you do it in middle school. And... Uh, um, and, and all of those other areas of your life that you've been in so far. Uh, and the AP exam, actually, I think, believe, I believe it still has the lowest five rate, which makes this uh, out of all the, excuse me, all the history classes. So this class is pretty tough, pretty, pretty tough. Uh, the contrary, AP world history, I'm gonna put it in the C category. It's probably on par with the AP European history difficulty. I would actually say it's even easier than the European history difficulty because you have more general knowledge of it. Uh, this class is typically taken for sophomores, and so you kind of have some knowledge from HGAP, AP Human Geography, that helps you a little bit with this class in terms of the analysis and stuff, so that's pretty nice. AP Chemistry, I'm going to go ahead and put in the A category. This is probably, I would say, on par with AP Physics 1 in terms of difficulty. I think people can kind of go either way, which, which one's more difficult. This class is typically taken for juniors, maybe seniors sometimes for sophomores, I guess. Um, I, what I recommend with this class is that you've taken it honors chem before you've taken this class. If not, this class will become very, very difficult, very, very fast. What makes AP Chem, I think, so difficult um, is that you don't have much general knowledge about it, unlike you know world history, European history that you've kind of been looking at your whole life. Uh, and honestly, the content is just hard. 
right? It's a very fast paced class. It's a very rigorous class because there's not much time to teach all the topics. And so you've got to be putting in the work outside of class, doing the homework to study for these tests and do well. AP Spanish literature, I'm going to go ahead and put in the B. I think what makes this class so hard uh, is that, first of all, it's a step up from Spanish Lang. Um, you're reading 38 different texts all in Spanish. You really, really expect it to master this. Even just being a native speaker isn't really enough, I think, to really do well in this class. You need to really still put in the work to analyze the text and know these texts. Some of these texts are really long, 30, 40 pages long. Um, just imagine 38 of those throughout the year. So not only do you have to be good at analyzing them, but you also have to be good at writing in Spanish, which you've done a little bit of practice in Spanish language, but Spanish lit definitely takes it to a whole nother level. AP Research, I'm gonna go ahead and put on par with AP Seminar, though typically it tends to be a little bit easier than Seminar. Research is a little bit more focused in terms of you only do one paper and one presentation versus Seminar, you do think about four activities, if I remember correctly. Um, but AP Research, a lot of teachers do completion grades because you're submitting this work to College Board, meaning they can't really give you feedback because that would be you know, sort of a conflict of interest there. Um, so this class tends to be a little bit easier compared to the other AP classes. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and conclude the AP class unit tier list. Sorry, this video became kind of long. I was trying to keep it under 15 minutes, but I hope this helps. Now, you don't wanna just take all the easiest classes in the AP in the AP world just to be, you know, just to boost your GPA. You do wanna have a good balance between those hard and those easy classes. A lot of times those hard classes can be a little bit more useful than some of the easier ones in terms of credit. For example, CSP doesn't offer that much credit, but Calculus BC does. And so you need to make those considerations for yourself, but just keep the difficulty in the back of your head. You don't wanna also overburden yourself by taking AP Cab, AP Physics C, AP Calc BC, uh, and AP Music Theory all in the same year. That'd be, that'd be a lot. So just take this with a grain of salt though, and use this for your decision making um, to, you know, make the best course load for your year. I hope this information helps. Drop a comment if you have any questions and have a great day.